this is part 23 of the basic Python programming tutorial for Blender users. So to, in this uh, tutorial we'll draw a polynomial. Now this becomes important because if you'd seen my video on creating a gallery spotlight then you'd seen you could you could actually do it without coding it but you have to hand calculate everything and if you want a really precise uh, polynomial curve or quadratic curve then you, it takes a lot more work so we'll just do it within here and since we've already done a lesson similar to this where you uh, remember we picked up this code this is one of the example codes and we modified it a little bit where you take the mesh we grab all the vertices within the mesh and then we incremented the x value by neg by negative three in that particular case so we're going to do the same thing but let's first of all we'll, we'll do it to a to a line but there's some issues associated with doing that and but we'll also take a look at this polynomial real quick just for a quick review so I've already written this down in here so for those of you who don't recall from your algebra class or pre-algebra is uh, basically this is a quadratic polynomial here's my x-axis my y-axis and it's quadratic because it has a second degree term quad is kind of implies otherwise but it means it's a second degree term in this equation so y is equal to x squared so I'm going to choose points along the x-axis and here's my table that I created so I'm going to choose these points negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 and I'm going to plug them in to this equation respectively so for the first term negative 3 I plug this into x it becomes y is equal to negative 3 squared and when I multiply negative 3 times negative 3 it becomes a 9 and so y is equal to 9 and there's my answer so I do the same thing with negative 2 I get 4 negative 1 gets 1 etc and then with that I was able to plot the points here's negative 3 and 9 here's negative 2 and 4 negative 1 and 1 and then I can draw the curve like that alright so that's essentially what we'll be doing but we'll be doing it in code and one of the issues I've run across is well there's other ways you could do it we could just start from scratch but if we take say for instance uh, let's just look at it from above I'll add a plane to the scene like that scale it up okay once I have it basically I'm just trying to extract a point out of it so I'll go into edit mode I'm in vertex select I'll grab a point I'll press P I've basically separated it away from the object then I edit, leave edit mode, and I delete the object. But what is left over, and you can barely see it right there, is that vertex. Except the origin's up there as well. Well, I don't really want that, so I want to translate that back. So I transform the origin to the geometry. So it puts their co-located right now. And then the other thing I'll do, well, we could, let's just go put it in the center. I'll move my cursor to the center and then I'll move my selection to the cursor so now it's just sitting in the center of our design right there so there's our point and so we can look at it just like this normally would here's our x-axis in red and here's our y-axis like that and we'll pick points along the curve like this based on using this active element right here but that's not the only one we want let's get up this window and see where it's actually located right now it says it's located at zero zero. First thing I'm going to do is we'll put on yes where is it where is no uh, not proportional editing snap during transform so if I move this let's see see it jumps between here and there so there's negative two negative three negative four negative five we'll start it like this and the reason I'm building this from a single point is because if you were to just take a square or a plane and and you left a line left over and then you subdivided that line then your verti vertices would be out of order yeah probably like one four two uh, five and three would be the order if you subdivided a line that had three vertices along it but in this case we'll just do it this way so I'm just going to extrude this point there's other ways to do this I'm just showing you one way one possible way of doing it so I'll, I'll extrude it by EX yikes what did I do that I need to be in edit mode okay EX since I had and then I'll just keep doing that EX
And this is exactly how I created the polynomials within the, those integral calculus videos that I did with all the, that I did in the game physics engine. But it turned out that series of videos wasn't so popular, so I quit working on those for the time being. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, okay, that looks good enough. So basically we have all these points of the mesh like this. There we go, and we'll leave edit mode. So now it is the active object in here. So now we can get back to the code. Here, so then you'll see that the code is really just, should be nothing to it. This is for, in this case, what we're doing for all the objects in this scene. Well, we don't really need all the objects in the scene. Oh, uh, we just go find out what its name is. It's plain dot zero zero two. We'll just do it this way. We'll do. We'll just plain dot zero zero two. All right. So it's only going to find that object in the scene. Then we come down to the mesh. Um, I had set a counter before because we were, I was just modifying the first vertex within each mesh. So I don't really care about this counter anymore. I can just comment that out. And then is it, if the counter is equal to zero, s modify the mesh like that, but I don't care about that. Okay, you know what we're going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to guarantee it's lined up. I just get rid of those guys. Okay, so then it should go through, but instead we're just going to take the in that take case, we're taking the y value, I mean the x value, but we really want to change the y value. So y is equal to v.co.x, well, squared times v.co.x. I guess that would be it. But basically, y is equal to x squared. We take the x value and square it. I think that's it. I don't know. Let's just save that. And let's. Uh, open the screen let's run it let's get rid of this window here and get rid of that window there let's look closer at it here and see if we can see how many mistakes I made let's see alt P to run it error error it's early in the morning and I already got an error let's see what the console says object has no attribute data line 13 what are you talking about line 13 this was from, I had copied it from an earlier version and pasted it. And then I forgot to get rid of the other stuff. That's very nice. Let's get rid of that part of the code. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so now that should be it in here. All right, let's run it. All right, so what happened? Did something. Took the mesh. Oh, it did it the wrong direction. Now, what did I do there? So basically, it took the point all the points and it modified I said why did I have that point rotated or something like that let's go take a look at n let's see negative 5 and 5 is the location negative 5 and 5 maybe you goofed it up from the previous run but I don't think so let's see well we do see it's modifying the curve and it looks like a parabolic curve but why it got all twisted in there we're gonna have to go figure that out let's see if the code looked right so I was really saying the y value, I cycled through the mesh for all the vertices that took each one, each y value, and I said is equal to the x value times the x value. y is equal to x squared. So it should have cycled through all the values in there along the way. And it looks like it turned it into a quadratic curve, but why it skewed it? Oh, well, maybe it skewed it here because the object location I changed like that but it looks like it's skewed so what we're going to do I'm going to control Z that code that command real quick and make sure I don't lose my code when I do it control Z yeah see when you control Z it t takes away all my old code as well so I gotta be careful that's why I just copied it I'm gonna paste it all right uh, forget moving the object at the end like that. Let's go verify these in here, these points. They look, well, that looks okay. The only thing they could have done is if I move this in edit mode, maybe this really didn't know it is zero, zero at the outset, but it looks okay. So, oh, location, negative five, zero. 
So it would be negative 5. It's already negative 5. Maybe it's looking at it from negative 5. Oh, I see what it's doing. So my, um, my origin is here. So let's move our origin back, transform the origin to the geometry. So now it sits here back at the center like that. All right. So, so now let's run the code. Okay, so then it puts it in, well, there's our quadratic curve, but it does it upside down. It really should have done it in the positive axis. And the only thing I can think of is that my uh, screen is upside down, that I'm looking at it the wrong direction, very likely. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> well, we can verify that by... <laughs> No, because there's Y. That is the goofiest thing. <laughs> that, unless I have my thing turned. <laughs> uh, sometimes, okay, I'm, you know what we're going to do? We'll just put an object in the scene. We'll add a cube right there. And we're just going to see where it's located. It says X, Y. It says up in positive Y direction. That looks good to me. So my code is backwards. It says for, is equal to the Y is equal to X times X x times x. That'd be x squared. x squared. Okay, you know what? I think you get the idea. There's something that goofed up in there, but maybe I'm just doing it in here. Something. I mean, obviously that should be x squared, and that should be those should be positive values instead of negative values. So maybe I rotated the object for starters. I don't know what I did, but I'll figure it out, and then I'll update it in, in the next lesson. But I'll let you take it from there. All right. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.